Here's a fun fact. The name Terratopia quite literally translates to Monster Paradise. That may sound like a fun place to visit, but I'd hold off making reservations because it's currently being invaded by these annoying red creatures that are kidnapping everybody. Well, almost everybody. This is the colorful adventure of one monster and his journey to save his friends and teach those three-eyed creatures a lesson. You know, that's a solid setup for a 3D platformer. But the real question remains, is Terratopia good or is it terrible? Let's find out. As the lone survivor, it's up to a blue monster named Tucho to save his green and orange friends from an entire family of red giants. The odds may be stacked against him, but Tucho has two things that are on his side. He's really pissed off right now, and he knows how to punch. He's the melee monster, which is perfect because there's a whole army's worth of spiky red enemies to beat up as he travels through a dozen long and interconnected stages. As it turns out, all three of the creatures are great at fighting. The inhabitants of Terratopia really pride themselves on their good-natured fisticuffs. Tucho, as we already know, is great at melee while green monster Benito shoots long-range projectiles and orange blob creature Horatio poison his foes with this really disgusting spit. All three of these heroes have different special abilities, which can include both passive and aggressive powers. And as we continue to beat up the bad guys, Tucho, Benito, and Horatio will level up, increasing their strength, luck, and more. Best of all, the levels carry over between characters, so you won't need to level up each hero individually. Now, on top of punching and shooting and vomiting up poison, the monsters also have one more trick up their furry sleeve. And those are tiny monsters! In a move that is reminiscent of the Pikmin franchise, Terratopia allows you to toss out these tiny AI-controlled monsters that'll help you take on the hordes of enemies. These little guys are incredibly useful, and you'll even be able to affect them in different ways by using the monster's different abilities. That said, the easy difficulty meant that I didn't really need to rely on them that much, only really using them in the later stages and on some of the tougher bosses. Speaking of which, the 13 boss characters are a real highlight. We go up against an entire family of giants, including the baby, Stoner son, metalhead brother, wigged out sister, and one very smelly grandfather. While these battles aren't always that much fun to take on, I like the boss designs and how much personality they bring to the game. It's as if for a brief moment we're transported away from the fairly generic 3D brawling action and able to see the creativity and potential that Terratopia once had. It all leads up to a late game twist that is so surprising that I had to stop for a couple of seconds just because I was laughing too hard. Unfortunately, these brief glimpses of originality are few and far between. As both a brawler and a platformer, this game falls short in some real crucial ways. The characters lumber around, getting into repetitive fights and large, boring levels that aren't much fun to explore. I like that the entire world is connected, but there's really no reason for it to be. Very few of the stages stand out in any meaningful way, something that is only highlighted when the game forces you to revisit past levels to go on a lame scavenger hunt. Yeah, you can get away with this kind of filler if the levels are stylish or interesting or maybe just fun, but they aren't in Terratopia. They just run together as you take on the same batch of enemies in the same button mashy way. And that reminds me, there's really no reason to play as the orange blob Horatio. I can make the case for both Benito and Tucho, depending on whether you want to play the game as more of a shooter or a beat-em-up, but Horatio? Mmm, his disgusting poison vomit is completely useless. That's not to say that you can't beat the levels and bosses with the orange blob, but it's substantially harder without any upside. 
the balance is all off, which will likely result in most players sticking to their favorite character for most of the game. Oh, and did I mention that Horatio is not only terrible in combat, but he's also the worst at platforming? Terratopia breaks down the moment the game introduces floating platforms or really anything the hero can fall off of. These monsters may look durable, but it doesn't take much to die from fall damage. This is especially true for Horatio, who has a bad tendency of rolling right off the edge. And no, the loose control certainly doesn't help. I lost count of the number of times I fell into a bottomless pit simply because we're fighting on this teeny tiny platform. All this is made even worse by the overlong stages and dozens upon dozens of bad guys you have to fight through every single time. Man, the monotony deflates any sense of momentum this game once had. It also needs to be said that Terratopia is a buggy game with terrible frame rate. There were times when I thought my PlayStation 4 was going to explode because there were too many enemies on the screen. That's especially surprising given that it's not exactly a great looking game. The barren levels and simplistic character designs don't look like they'd be all that taxing, yet there were points in the game where it was almost unplayable. Yeah, in its current state, Terratopia isn't worth visiting. Terratopia is a messy mix of genres that doesn't quite come together in the end. While the boss characters may be full of personality, that doesn't make up for the boring stage designs, frustrating gameplay, and horrendous frame rate. This is a monotonous adventure filled with plotting action and way too much filler. It's bright and colorful, but Terratopia loses its way long before the journey is over. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What is the best video game vacation destination? While you might want to avoid Terratopia, there are so many great video game worlds that I would love to go on for a, for a holiday or something. I mean, just off the top of my head, I'd immediately book a trip to Viva Pinata. Seriously, that sounds like the greatest vacation ever. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, January may be nearly over, but the reviews keep piling up. We're also going to be debuting a new series where I recap January. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.